Nigel, thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to start off with regulations. How has it positively or negatively affected the process of terrorist financing? I think the biggest problem that we face in all regulation is over-regulation. Um, we need to regulate, we need to regulate effectively, but we need to leave how that regulation is effected in the hands of the people who are in fact operating the businesses. And the moment you begin to over-prescribe, which is what regulation has been doing, then you begin to take away the power of those businesses to be able to respond effectively to threats as they evolve. Um, has regulation been effective? It has been effective to a point. The point is that it is, everyone is aware of what they have to do. But is it that they have become able to prevent terrorist financing? No. And why can't they do that? Because terrorist financing is so varied, because the money is coming from legitimate sources, it's often going to legitimate sources, it's often outside the financial sector altogether, and it's often not in money. And so if you've got someone who is providing a house, providing a car, someone who robs a, um, a place in order to get the tools of that offence, this is not something which the, fin which the financial sector is able to look at. So regulation within its own narrow defined objectives has had a degree of success. Is it successful in preventing terrorist financing or as the Americans call it, the materi uh, material support for terrorism? No. Well, shall we then move away from prescription? We need to move away from prescription generally in, in relation to, um, to, to regulation. Prescription tells people exactly what to do. And if they do it, they stop thinking. We need to allow people the room to think. If we're going to have effective risk management, which is the other plank of what people are told they must have, regulators all say, we must have risk awareness, we must um, ensure that everything is risk assessed. And then having said that, they say, but actually you've got to do it like this. Well, that's not risk assessing, that's compliance. So people are spending far too much time on compliance. They're using all their intellect on compliance and they're not actually having, they don't have the time to think about what they're doing. They don't have time to think about the risks. They don't have time to think about evolving risks. And the problem with prescription is that as a new risk develops, if there isn't already a process designed within the regulatory regime for it, people say, we don't have to do it. And we know that's the case because a very, very large bank in the 1990s um, when I asked them why they didn't regulate credit cards in the way that was done in, in some other jurisdictions, said, because our government hasn't told us to. It's interesting because you talked about uh, people in connection with technology, but how can we better utilise people and technology when it comes to counteracting money laundering processes? Well, I think the first problem is that we have become dependent upon the idea that technology is, is a solves all problem. There is no solution with technology. All it does is act as a tool. We have to understand that technology does nothing that people don't tell it to do. And so the important thing is to get the information in. A lot of what we look at with technology is people designing processes. Actually, what we need is the data. There is a point of view that we should be using technology for looking at, for example, trade-based money laundering and that there is data which is available, but there is an idea that we should have a discrete system for doing that. No, we should not. We should, the data is what's important, not the, not the tech behind that data. The, 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 we already have access to a wide range of data matching software. All we need is the data as an additional table, effectively, within the database that we're using for data matching. I think that what we, we tend to think of something, of, of the technology that we're using for, for example, KYC, as something unduly special. It's not. It's just a hyped up version of Match.com. We're just looking to see if we've got this data about this person, this data about that, that whatever, do they fit together? And if so, what do we do about it? There's nothing special about technology in the financial sector. There really is not. It's just database applications that are being sold as being some kind of magic. Where the magic happens is in the people. And we are excluding the people by the focus on technology. We have the, the finest computing power available to each and every one of us in our own heads, but we're not using it because we're saying we've got this regulatory re regime that tells us we must do ABC. We've got this computer system that takes that, that responsibility away from us. Therefore, we don't need to think. This is not the correct approach. The most valuable tool in every financial institution is its people. We underutilize it. We undertrain them. We do not give them the awareness of the power they have and we don't teach them what they really need to be taught. If they're going to be able to report suspicion, which is what they're told they must do, we have to teach them how to understand what suspicion is, 
and we need to tell them how to understand how to react to it. And we need to tell them why people don't get suspicious when in theory they should. These are things which are not taught and they should be. Is expanding regulation to non-financial institutions beneficial? I think that one of the things that people don't really understand in the wider world is that following the regulatory system is actually a very important risk management system for every business, not just the financial institutions. The fact that they are being forced to do it by regulation is only because they have not understood the benefits of doing it. Why is it beneficial? It's because the general law, not, law, not the stuff that relates to financial institutions that talks about reporting and the like, the general law in every country says if you launder money, you are a criminal. And what people have yet to understand is money laundering regulations as applied to the financial institutions, in fact, are by far the best risk management tool for everybody to do with bribery, corruption, whether it's terrorist financing passing through a charity, all of these things, the template for proper risk management is that that you find in the money laundering regulations. Ideally, it should be set up as being something like an ISO 9000 system across many industries. The fact we're having to compel lawyers, accountants, dealers in high value goods, is, an, is a mark of how they have fought against the effectiveness of the, of the basic law that is required, against the effectiveness of the legislation. They have actually acted to the detriment of society as a whole by protecting their perceived best interests. We need them regulated, we need them prosecuted when they fail. Great, thank you so much Nigel for your input.